the, the overlay. I'm getting confused. Jeff is actually on the right, so we're gonna go to Jeff on the right first and talk and then show his list, and then we'll go over to the worst coast child himself. Um, OBS, there we go. And wrong one, there we go. All right, Jeff is flying Inquisitors. He's got a bunch of Foresight Inquisitors. One of them has sense. That's about it. There isn't really much else to talk about. Uh, Jeff's gonna try to block. He's gonna take uh, evades every turn. He's gonna make it really hard to be killed. And he's gonna possibly line up some of those bullseyes for, uh, for the Foresight shot, so. Let's go over to Isaiah. He is running the beloved broadside with a whole upgrade and ion cannon turret because you have to go ion cannon turret with broadside there's nothing else you can you put on them you just you can't you don't and we got four clt jedi yeah um so it looks like they're getting ready to play they're setting their dials i'll give them a second to set their dials assign them all that good stuff and then we will get started uh we are getting pretty close to our 175 follower goal what do you need to do to follow well if you're new to twitch then i can tell you but otherwise you probably know you can click the follow button it's just next to our stream uh some some cool animation stuff pops up when you do that uh what are we doing when we hit 175 followers that's a great question we are giving away a copy of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order on any system, as well as a copy of the Empire at War Gold Pack on Steam. Two different active followers will win those giveaways. So to be an active follower, you just have to kind of, you know, say something in the chat every once in a while and just watch, be an active follower. Doesn't take too much. I'm not asking you to, you know, watch all our streams. Everyone's busy, we got lives. But hey, if you want to win that game or you know somebody that would love it, um. Yeah, that's how we're gonna get there. We gotta unlock it at 175, so. Yeah, I'm doing it out of the kindness of my own heart and I'm not even trying to toot my own horn. I just, I want other people to enjoy those games like I did, so. Caps won't get your, no. Uh, don't worry guys, uh, Nightbot is, I changed all the settings in Nightbot so you can caps lock. It's not a problem, So Lucky Apex was the one that uh, exploited the flaws with Nightbot's default set. Let me just ask them, are they ready? And we're off. I just tabbed them so they know to start. They started the timer and here we go. Good luck, have fun, a little virtual handshake. Awesome, let me fix the right side of the overlay a little bit because we do have some bleed or left side now because I switched them. We do have a little bit of bleed with Isaiah. So if you guys probably know Isaiah, Isaiah is a young a young dude, but he is incredibly good at Star Wars X-Wing. Um, he went to Worlds this past year, and he destroyed grown adults and made them mad. And it was awesome. He's a good kid. He's a lot of fun, very funny, and he has his own podcast, The Worst Coast Children, who are notably known for defeating Zach Matthews in a round of Swiss. Isaiah takes that takes that uh, crown for that. So. All right, so we got we got the Jedi moving moving fast. Not really, but we do have them bunched up towards the center broadside, staying back a little bit and looks like Isaiah is going to barrel roll the other one out. He's going to kind of open up. Let's see does he want to go middle middle or no, it failed. That's what happened. He hit the gas cloud with that. So you don't want the Jedi to be flown in a tight swarm formation because you won't be able to get as many ships in bullseye. You kind of want to catch ships in bullseye. Um, you set up a little bit of a trap. You have them, a couple of them get behind, a couple of them are on the left, a couple of them are on the bottom, you know, going towards the right. You try to get the, the Inquisitors in a trap and the Inquisitors are trying to do the exact same thing. All right, and let's see, who took first player? It looks like, is there overlap here? Yeah, I believe it was uh, it was Isaiah who took first player, who is first player. I think Jeff gave it to him. Yeah, Jeff has a four point bid, so we'll mark Isaiah as first player. Yeah, I'm excited to 
I want I love Fallen Order so much that I want to buy someone else Fallen Order. So if you know of anybody that likes the, that loves Star Wars or likes you know Star Wars games, um, I started this stream thing as just kind of a community thing, like for my friends, for me to be able to enjoy stuff with people. Um, it's a good time. So obviously I care about how it looks. My standards are high enough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you know of anybody, let them know about about the three one two stream. Oh, we got a loose shield there. You will, in all caps, I will. I'll make it legal. All right, let's 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 try the poll again, because last time the API wasn't working. So let's try doing a poll again. I have to make sure I spell his name right, Isaiah's name right, I think. Did I get it? Yes, I believe so. Will this work? Uh, nope. All right, anyway, guys, who do you think who you got? If you had to pick a side. It actually, Apex, it worked earlier. I got it to work. But the ironic, the ironic part of it was at our maximum viewership, we had like three votes. So people just didn't want to do it. That guy. Uh, uh, what is this game? I don't know what's happening, but I like Republic, so. Fair enough, fair enough. Hopefully everybody's excited to have a good weekend. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm celebrating my anniversary with my girlfriend. We're gonna go get some of our favorite food, takeout, of course. Uh, so that we're doing, celebrating that tomorrow and I'm gonna be streaming in the next couple days too. So I get to see y'all. Be sure to stop by if you're around. Looks like we got a little bit of a, we got some Republic fans. We got Catherine who we all know she loves the bad guys, so fair enough. She's going for the Imperials. So you could buy it on Amazon for $30, I think, still, around there. It shouldn't be full our MSRP right now. Um, check it out. Buy buy the $30 kit, like the core set, and just like play with your, you know, your roommate, your friend, girlfriend, whatever. Don't force your girlfriend or a boyfriend to play it. They don't want to. <laughs> um, and uh, it's 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 a lot of fun, uh, even for just a household game. It's so much fun. It's really cool. If you like Star Wars, you'll like it. That's what I wanted to do too. I had so much fun. All right, so let's see here. We have. All right, no consequences when you're far away. So we have uh, the brown or beige Jedi turning onto the gas cloud. So Apex, I can kind of talk through the game with you about you know how this game works. So. You have different, here, let me switch camera views real quick. See, these are pilot cards that pertain to the ships you see on the board. The orange number is their pilot skill, and then they have uh, stats at the bottom, which is their attack value, their, uh, zoom in, their agility, their green dice for defense. This is their health, their hull, and they have shields. So when you're dealt damage, you lose shields first. And then Jedi have force, so this force is used to modify dice simply put uh and then you'll see this orange number is their pilot skill so it goes from one to one to six in this game in the second edition of x-wing so this is a initiative three or pilot skill three we like to call pilot skills technically initiative so um the lowest initiative is going to be moving first and shooting last and the highest initi initiative is going to move last but shoot first so for example han solo is an initiative six and han always shoots first I always like to when I demo this game. Um, you'll see there's cards next to them. Those are upgrades. So a hull upgrade gives them extra yellow health point, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You have 200 points to build your squad. Uh, so you can build it up to 200 or keep it lower if you want to try to outbid your opponent and move or, you know, choose to move before or after them. Uh, you have dials, which basically show how your ship can move. There's three different types of maneuvers. There's uh, the stress clearing or the simplest maneuvers that are blue. Then there's white maneuvers, which are basic maneuvers, and then there are red maneuvers, which usually get you turned around or are more difficult for your ship to perform just because of the type of ship it is. So uh, what what does it mean being stressed? Stress just means that when you do a, something like a red action or a red maneuver, it gives you this red token, which is a stress token, and it doesn't let you take actions, which help you modify dice. So to clear that, you have to do a blue maneuver, which is usually a pretty simple one. 
on your dial. So you get to fly your ships. You are a pilot. You are a commander of your fleet, of your squad. Yeah, and there's also Epic, which Epic supports those size ships, those big ones. So in Epic, instead of 200 points, say you'd be building a squad of like 500 points and you'd have like 10 ships or, you know, a giant ship and like a, a fleet, a mini fleet. Uh, really cool. Those games take longer, a little bit more expensive, but worth it because there's so much in it, so many components. It's a good time. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the gist of the game, basically, in the simplest forms. Pilot skill, your you know, lowest moves first, shoots last, highest moves last, shoots first. And then you start throwing dice at each other. Uh, when you hit obstacles, there's bad, there's effects for it and bad effects. If you're dealt a crit damage, your damage card isn't going to be face down, it's going to be face up, and it'll say something bad that you have to deal with, like take an extra damage, or you can't modify your dice unless you have a force, or something like that. So um, each damage, there's a damage deck that each player has, has 33 cards and you'll dole that out when you take damage. So, yeah, and as the game goes on, it's actually a great opportunity to just kind of see how it goes. So we're gonna see Jeff. Jeff is doing what Inquisitors do. He's just evading. So the Inquisitors have an action called evade, which basically means that you have that green token. You can spend it to change one of your green die results to an evade result, which will cancel out a, a hit. And because they have force, basically makes them impossible to damage. Um, it's possible, but it feels impossible. For a lot of the people that have played against them, it's real, real difficult. Isaiah's keeping broadside at a distance so he can eventually turn in and get that side arc point in for the ion cannon turret. Start ionizing some inquisitors. And then we have the back two Jedi that are... This is going to be a joust, guys. This is kind of a bloodbath. So, the last game we had a really, really fascinating game end in Final Salvo. We'll see how this game goes. Isaiah would be shooting first, checking broadside. These are all the same initiative, all the same initiative. So uh, the advantage of having the same initiative is, initiative is if you die, you get to shoot back before you're removed. But if, if it's not the same, um, if there is no overlap, then the ship's removed after it's uh, taken enough damage. Yeah, sorry, the uh, Sea Rock is what I was thinking of. Sea Rock uh, Raider, the Raider is in um, X-Wing, but Armada is not too different. It's it's It takes longer though. All right. So it's like Isaiah's got that CLT lined up, range three into the yellow Inquisitor. So here's the first shot of the game. He gets to add with the with calibrated laser targeting. If you have them in your bullseye arc, you're adding that focus result. So he gets three total dice. Now he can spend his focus for three hits. E. See this one, that one is that green. Yeah, that is green. So green still has a force. So he spent his focus for three hits. That's going to be some damage. That's going to be a damage. So he spends the evade and he spends a force. Yellow. Yellow takes damage. So one away from half on yellow. Isaiah able to defy odds and damage an Inquisitor with double mods at range three. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Just want to, you could display that. Uh, hey, Luke, how about, let's talk about the display factors of these ships. Talk about things like that are awesome to display. Buying X-Wing expansions just to display them, I totally understand why people do that. Makes sense. Like, that's kind of why I did it at first, and then I realized how fun the game was. I'm like, oh yeah, I want to play too. It's more, more enjoyable when you can display them and play the game. It's double trouble. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a shamelessly plug myself again, not the stream, but if you want to see an, a stop motion film made with Star Wars X-Wing ships, for my, my capstone film at DePaul University before I graduated, I made a short film using Star Wars X-Wing ships, composited it like they used to in the original trilogy movies. It was, it was a lot of fun. If you want to see some, if you want to watch that. Uh, exclamation point YouTube. <laughs> I sound like Dia. No, yeah, but, uh, or, or go to the YouTube panel. It's called It's a Trap. 
It's a good time. All right, one hit, or two hits from yellow. Jeff's gonna spend the evade, plenty. Plenty, it's tough to put damage through on these guys. And I think that's all the shots Isaiah has. Broadside couldn't have shot, uh, even though he had his turret facing the side because the ion cannon turret only extends to range two. Yeah, that was the first time I've ever built something that sophisticated, uh, a puppet like that. It was really fun. It was kind of terrifying, but I had, it was cool. I, I, it was a lot of fun. I still have them in my closet over here. I've kept them intact. My roommate built the cockpit. We built it together. Um, shout out to Eddie for doing that. But yeah, I, it's actually, it was like made in like three different mediums. I'll tell it, talked about that in a second. So finishing these shots, no damage, no damage. So Isaiah doesn't take any damage this turn. So he wins the, he wins the round cuz technically How did I not know you did this? Yeah, Catherine does do great cosplay and I appreciate that, Luke, but also you got to look at yourself, man, cuz people are envious of your talents as well. You're right though. There are so many cool people in the X-Wing community. I think that's what I like about it the most. There's a lot of creative people that are they, they live their lives, you know? They have a, they have awesome hobbies and interests. All right, so Jeff is checking Arc from red now. He's gonna take the shot into green. So green has a force left for defense and uh, spends his force to make it two hits. Now Isaiah's gonna roll four dice because he's got range three. Let's get that extra bonus defense die. And plenty, plenty. It is, yeah. I okay. So I, I that um I think they're going to back going to back to dials now. I believe oh, maybe one more shot. Brown, green shouldn't have a shot. Oh yeah, he has uh, broadside or what is that yellow? His eye color changed. So actually what happened with his eyes, they were always black, but because um, I used uh, I used a polymer clay I baked and then I painted on his eyes, but because I had to constantly touch them to move his eyes around, it eventually wore down a little bit and some of the paint chipped. It was really hard to prevent that from happening. I, did, I tried very hard, I tried using tools and everything. So hit crit from green, the Green Inquisitor. This isn't a broadside, you could do some damage here. That is going to be a damage. Broadside takes a shield. Noob. But yeah, so um, I'm gonna finish off with uh, with brown or beige here. And then I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit more for those that actually care. All right, just one hit. Got it. Broadside's doing just fine. So, all right, so this turn. I think yellow already shot. Did I, did I, I thought yellow shot already. Did I miss that? Maybe it was Isaiah's shot in the yellow. They're talking about something. <laughs> All right, yep, yellow shooting a broadside. Just one. So that's three dice, because it's obstructed and range three, shooting through that rock. Plenty. Yeah, so basically it was a, a multi-medium uh, film that I made. So I, I made the backgrounds and rendered everything in Cinema 4D. So I, every the, the backgrounds, the space stuff is all 3D. And then I filmed and composite. I filmed and composited the stop motion. I did the ships with a motion capture rig or a motion rig. Uh, so it's a DSLR hooked to a crane that you can dial in and keyframe, and it'll move and it'll rotate. It's like what they use on 
professional stop motion films like you know uh kubo and the two strings or uh what's the latest like a movie that i really liked um the one about big bigfoot uh missing link um yeah so i got to use one of those, those super amazing blessing being able to do that and uh then i also filmed the other part of the pilot stuff at home and then i all and then i made did all the vfx in after effects composited it and new so i used like six different programs and then i did the sound design and pro tools it was it was crazy it was it was a lot of work i was it was tiring but i had a good time and i thought hey maybe some of the x-wing people would appreciate it because i i used i made jake who's the co the pilot um an e-wing pilot because i love the e-wing so much but yeah it was it was really hard to rig all the the ships the way I wanted it to because I actually I didn't move the ships but I would move the camera to make it look like the ships were moving. So. Jake from State Farm. He used to work at State Farm and then he joined the rebellion. But he might have might have been second guessing that decision. That's a that's a life choice that I just love I, I love being able to tie it into a new hope where he just like he shows up and the Death Stars at Yavin. I'm like, oh that'd be such a fun way to end it. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do I end it? That's that's a one way to end it, I guess. All right. Let's 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 relieve the eye strain. Let's change camera angles a little bit. There we go. So this is this is a joust, guys. If if you uh, didn't know what a joust looked like, this is what a joust looks like. Okay, chat. There we go. You're ready to go. Broadside's just moving forward, keeping the side arc facing that those Inquisitors. That makes the most sense. Really curious to see what Brown does here. The Brown, um, the beige or Brown that I knight there. Is be a bump. Depending on how slow it went. Getting getting in the face. So the, the advantage of Isaiah being able to move first, not only does he get to engage first, but he can block. And that's what Jeff wants to do, because almost any other list he's gonna be able to, to block because they're at you know initiative three, but not in this matchup. I will say that the players kind of wanted to do choose something that made the most sense for them. So, and in terms of matchup wise, they wanted to do something kind of crazy. So, Jeff's like, "I'm gonna ruin this kid's day." <laughs> he, he whipped out this Inquisitor list. I'm like, "Oh man, I'm, I have a headache playing. Like, I'm just watching Isaiah uh, play against this list." But it looks like a good time. But it's. I don't play many games of Xing where I just can I can't like deal a single point of damage, and I feel like the Inquisitor builds are like made to prevent people from ever doing damage. Sure, dice dice luck plays a factor, but if you roll average, you probably shouldn't be taking any much, if any, unless you're taking more than one shot. That's one way to whittle down an Inquisitor is shoot at three or four ships at him, or even just two. Catherine, how's your Friday going? Shout out to Catherine, who's our uh, one of our first subscribers. Best. Shout out in all caps. Speaking of, also uh, shout out to the next gen, uh, next gen games in LA, but just next gen games. Period. They're an awesome chain store in LA I visited when I was in December was really cool and these guys I got to play with are really really nice and really good so um, you might know the uh, fly better podcast is kind of the area that these guys are, are in that's where that's their home base it's HQ doing well good semi distracted at the moment oh it's fine I'm, I'm happy to have portion of your attention that's that's gloomhaven that looks like a good game though 
A. Luke, Luke is doling out all the generosity. Thanks, man. Gifting a sub. Well, let's repeat that. Let's let's see the Death Star blow up and plan it again. No, that's not Planet Earth, but it might look a little like, like a little bit like it. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. Appreciate it, man. Nick just likes seeing his animation. <laughs> Baby. I, you know what? I, I will, I'll level with you. I actually like hearing the sound more than, more than like seeing the animation. It just, I love that sound. The whole like, I, I nerd out whenever I hear like the comments primary ignition and then you hear that boom, like the pulling of the lever sound. Ah, it, it's nothing, nothing's better than that. I'm such a nerd. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we have a uh, green going into blue, or not blue, uh, beige. Visitor could spend his focus. He is going to get shot though by two, at least two, maybe even blue. I don't think you spend it here. I don't think you can. Buffaluffagus. I love saying that. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. What, what project did he get roped into? I'm curious. Please explain. Plenty. Oh, wait. Uh, it's Benzie Evade. Yeah. Inquisitors. Doing what Inquisitors do. So now, I think we're checking. Isaiah's going to check broadside now. Or are we doing red? Yep, checking. So Broadside has a couple, he has two different ships he could shoot at range two. He's got yellow and he has green. Going out, going into green. So this is tough. An Ion Cannon turret at range two against an Inquisitor with double mod. Oh, actually only one mod because it bumped. So he's going to need to get three hits here. Yep, he's going to spend the focus. So that's three hits, so now Jeff needs two evades and not be ionized. Spends his force, just takes the damage. So the, ion, the ion cannon turret will only deal a maximum of one damage. But Jeff takes the damage now on green. So two ships now, one away from half. And we lost it. Ooh, that's awesome, dude. I guess if you need help with anything. Or I just love to learn more about that process. That's really cool. I'd love to see like the the uh Ollie brought out this really cool whisper that like decloaked and was floating on the base, kinda like how you had your ships floating when you showed them on stream. Alright. Isaiah hit hit crit. Jeff rolls out of it. Oh no, blue did take a damage. Okay. So Isaiah's chipping away. He's got three different ships with a shield down. But now Jeff's gonna respond in a second. So we'll we'll see what he can do. <laughs> he made a seismic charge that looks and sounds like the movies when it explodes. Oh no, that's amazing. Oh I could only like I'm just thinking about that right now and I'm just imagining how amazing that'd be. Dude, I would just fly ships with seismic charges. Like anything that can take it. I don't care what it is, if it's good. Just just to just to see that happen over and over again. Alright, red is gonna take. I think that's in bullseye. Yeah, red is going into green. So we could get a half points on green here. So oh, a little bit of lag there, okay. That is a hit. So spend a force for two hits. Jeff spent his force on green, so that, ooh, two evades, just got it. The die slowly turned back over to the evade result. So no damage there from red.
Yeah, I actually like lost a, it wasn't a bet, but I told our group, the local guys I play with, I said, if, if it was one of them, I said, if you play on stream three times, then I will put a seismic charge sound effect into our stream whenever someone drops a seismic charge. And it was, it was Alex uh, Foles and I, and he, you know, he had been busy, so I didn't think he was going to be able to make it three times, but he did within the course of like three weeks or two weeks. So now I, I owe that to him and everyone else to, to put that into the game. But I have to figure out a way to do it so it's not super obnoxious. Maybe even make it a chat command. That would be cool, actually, to work on that. I could, I could. Let's see, how many followers are we at now? We're at 163, I think. Is that right? The follower goal thing hasn't been super accurate. Yeah, 163. Cool. That's awesome. We've gained like nine followers today. That's that's good. Those are good numbers. I like those numbers. Turns out people like watching X-Wing. Who would have thunk? All right. Yep. So uh, Beige is going to be going into the other Beige. Beige on Beige matchup here. The range one, you get the extra attack die, so Jeff rolls naturally hit hit crit. Who needs mods when you can just roll like that? Don't you love to see it? it? Tends to happen against me all the time. And ouch. Okay, that's gonna be a shield and a crit. That sticks. So the shield gets burned, and then Beige is taking a damage card. We're gonna see what that damage card is. Oh, wrong side. It is a wounded pilot. So with wounded pilot, after you in action, roll an attack die on a hit or crit, I believe. On a hit or crit, take a stress token. But you still get to do the action first. And let's type that in there. Wounded pilot. Okay, got it. Have people spend their points to use it. Yeah, that's what Dion did. Actually, I, I saw him figure that out. I was like, that's actually really cool. Like, they're, it's important to figure out ways to get people in the chat, like, more more involved because as somebody that will log into Twitch and just like tune into random people's streams, like let's be honest, guys. Let's just be let's be brutally honest here. It's a little boring when there's nothing going on but just somebody staring at a screen playing, you know, playing an average, you know, popular game. Um, there's got to be some substance. Yeah, some people are just super good entertainers. I, 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 this is such a valuable thing to have. But even them, they have things the chat can do to like pass the time. So I'm working on that a little bit more. I know the animations are only for following or subbing, but I'm gonna make some, I have some, some ideas, some tricks up my sleeve. Yeah, there's a Daiwanawanga emote from uh, Outer Rim when I played Outer Rim and I started doing a bunch of impressions. So we do have half points on green. Don't think we have any other damage though. Death's still rolling. All right, two hits. Not sure exactly who this is into. Bends a four, scroll is into green. Yeah, no problem. Now red will check shots. Got a few, few choices here. Green spent the force to get out of that one. Especially since Dion is bad at interacting with the chat. I don't even, I don't think that's true. I mean, I, hopefully you're just joking. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Um, no, I think Dion, Dion, you have to remember that Dion has a lot of stuff to manage. He has like four different, you know, he has like, he has like three monitors and like eight different screens. He's running a bot, like, man, that's tough. He's done a pretty good job, especially adding that that stream, the this the chat game where you get the marbles. That's hilarious. I think that's amazing. Blue Inquisitor. 
So he's he's going to he doesn't have a force left. So just hit crit. Let's see if yellow can get out of this. Yellow does not have a force, so that is going to be a shield on yellow now. So we have a bunch of different ships on each side that are just one damage away from half points. So as it stands, it's 20 to 20 points. I was totally joking, definitely. Not like you, Luke. You're you're always engaging with the chat. Hopefully, I haven't tuned into Paincast a little bit, but I'll I'll tune into the next one. Sometimes I'm streaming while you while you're streaming, and I feel bad. I'm like I I should be watching Paincast right now. You picky boy, picky boy. You're a pick. You're a picky boy. I read that as pickle for a second. Is that say pickle? Is it say picky? <laughs> what is what is that? I can't tell if that's an I or an L. Pickle boy. Yeah, I think it's pickle. Speaking of pickles, how about that? How about uh, how about pickles, Luke? <laughs> you know, DNA's pickles. All right, we're back to dials now. Change camera angle. All right, so this is going to be, this is always the the, uh, the third engagement is always where things get a little rough. We're probably going to look at yellow. Yellow is going to sloop or do a K turn. I think a K turn makes a little bit more sense. It keeps your op and ops and yeah, can't speak. Options open for going into both sides next turn. Uh, now yellow and red are in a decent spot. Broadside, we might see a turn, like a hard turn or just maybe a one or two bank. I feel like the bank might be safer because you might not necessarily get blocked. What do you guys think? What do you think you're, we're going to expect here? Isaiah does have the benefit of moving first, so he could set up a block. He could uh, move yellow out of the way and then have green just do like a two bank or, or, or a one bank and try to block. Maybe even barrel roll, set up a good shot. We could see that happen. I only stream because I'm a narcissist. Oh, come on. You stream because you have cool stuff to paint and you're good at it. I stream because, hi, I have a computer. I should stream. I'm a professional streamer. I'm the pro streamer. Sub to my channel. Hit the bell if you want to be notified. Yeah, I know, like all that stuff. That's my impression of like all of Twitch. And then like it's it's <laughs> paint me a dino, a dino, a dino sow. I don't know what that is. A dino sow. I think I know what you mean, but that doesn't exist, does it? Someone's typing too fast. Oh no, I only, did you, did you put one of like the two words that you can't say in the chat? Cause I like, I put like a profanity filter of like two different words. Or you just use asterisks. All right, Broadside did do a, t a hard turn, so that also sets up a block because, again, Jeff is can't move first, so he's going to have to deal with that. Foresight. Foresight goes off. This might be the first time we see Foresight trigger. Yep. Spends. Gets the free mod. He spent the force to do the shot. The so Broadside is going to take at least one damage here, and two damage goes through on Broadside, so that's going to be the last of Broadside's shields. Foresight doing some work there. All right, let's see where the rest of them go. So red, that leap frogs there. Don't think a boost would fit. He's just gonna take the focus. Not a bad spot to be. Did bump himself there though. So it did the did the one bank. So we could see 
we could see a dead mage if these two Inquisitors can get up close and take some good shots. Oh, that was green. Sorry. We could see a dead green. Green is shields down. Beige has two damage cards left, or two hole left, with Wounded Pilot. Rolling for Wounded. Yep. Going to take a stress. But... You take the stress after the action, so whatever, who cares? I think the most annoying uh, crit is stunned pilot, because if you know what you're doing, you're not going to be hitting obstacles, like, ever. I don't know. I don't like that crit. It's like, I, get, I always get annoyed when I see people draw that. It's like, of all the ones you could have gotten, all of the ones you could have gotten, stunned pilot. Great. Does the two Talon roll, the Red Maneuver. So it gets turned around, does take the stress, but is looking at a good shot there. Could actually use Foresight during the engagement phase for the free mod, because he does have the Force. Does not bump. Staring down broadside. Broadside has five hole left. So let's see. It's how how in danger is broadside here? We have Beige takes a probably a range three shot downtown. Um, gonna definitely taking the range one from blue. Yellow doesn't seem to have an arc, but I don't know if his yellow moved yet. No, yellow hasn't even moved yet, so we can see where yellow and red end up. Might not be a good turn for Broadside. Yep, yellow bumps. Okay. Like I said, the advantage of moving first. Being able to set up bumps. So when you're bumped, you can't engage, we can't shoot at the ship that is bumping you, that is at range zero of you. Um, and if you bump while moving, you can't take an action. So it's, it can be beneficial if you're trying to set one up um, or if there's a tactical strategy to it, but usually it's something that you don't want to have happen because you want to modify your dice. But passive mods like Force can help pad the consequence of, of running into another ship like that. So it's like yellow is checking arc first. Yellow going into blue. The blue is one damage away from half points. Let's have that evade. So here we go. It's going to be... Adds the focus result because he does have blue and bullseye. So the CLT shot. Three dice from yellow. Alright, spends the force. Make it two hits. One evade's gonna guarantee the one, yep, spend the evade, take damage. That's why you, that's why you take the evade. So now do we see broadside take the range one out the side or do we try to take blue down with the front arc shot? It's, tiff, it's tough. You could kill blue right here. You probably wanna take a ship off the board this turn. Both players are trying to look, looking to do that. All right, so we have, uh, it looks like that is beige. Beige is going into the Blue Inquisitor range one. Once again, getting three dice. Don't think he has bullseye. Oh, he does have bullseye, so he's gonna add the focus result and roll three dice. Not great. Not great, Bob. So we can spend the focus for two. Still not bad, but it's a pretty defenseless ship once it loses the token. It's a tough situation, it's tough. We might, we might see a ship traded for another here. Dinosaucer. What is your favorite dinosaur? 
and why is it your favorite dinosaur? So didn't spend the focus. Another range one shot into blue. This is gonna be from green, not bullseye. But does get the three dice, the extra one for range one here. Blue again has spent. No, blue does have a four, so no evade though. Did spend the evade from the shot from yellow. Can't see what that result is. It is an eyeball. Does have the force, but no focus. Changes it, spends it. Two hits into blue. Blue rolls one of eight. So that is going to be half points. So there's some points there for Isaiah. T-Rex because Jurassic Park changed my life. How about that that sound effect of the T-Rex like roar? Like I get chills, but it's talk about like a household sound. Like anybody in the world would recognize where that sound, like like where that originated from. It's like oh Jurassic Park. Oh, so good. I gotta rewatch Jurassic Park, Luke. Convince me I need to go back. Uh who we're checking on. it over having a discussion here about something wonder what they are talking about probably red red shot so red does have range two into the blue inquisitor who does only have two damage left or he's dead two hole left it's not a great shot though behind the rock. It's probably impossible to. It does have bullseye for, for red, but red has a force and an evade. Going into yellow. Okay, going for that range one shot. No bullseye, but range ones. Isaiah rolls those three. All right, about average there. Eyeball hits in a blank. Spends the force to make it two hits. Yellow does have a force available for defense, two evades, no problem, easy. Very dark now, it's gotten so dark, I like just took a look at my camera and it's pitch black on the monitor, on the screen there. Turn up to my little light I got. Why well, I have this light. All right, you got three hits. Let's see who's this going in. That. And this is going into, going into yellow. Yeah, spends the force, takes the shield. Yellow, half points. All right. So now the score we got, it's 60 points to 20. So able to triple Jeff's score there. Isaiah is able to do that. But Jeff is now looking to deal some punishment as well. Let's see if he's able to do that. There are some defenseless Jedi out on the board now. Bit on the camera. Sorry, I'm like fixing my camera there. That's better. Sure. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Which one does red want to go at? Red does have a force or a mod. Going into broadside. All right, trying to peel off broadside's focus. Hit crit, That'll, that, that's good. So you guys will see he changed the result back to a hit because plated hole, um, the ability on the Y-Wing means that if you aren't critically damaged, you can change a crit to a regular. So. Is taking a damage card, two damage cards on broadside. That I believe is half points now. It does have a whole upgrade, but I think that crosses the half points threshold. Let's take a look. It does. 42 points now for Jeff. All right, 
let's keep the questions coming. What is your favorite movie? And if, which I understand as a guy that loves movies, if that's a hard question to answer because you have so many movies you love, what movie would you be okay being forced to rewatch 10 times in one night, one sitting? What, would, would, what movie would you not mind rewatching 10 times in one night? I need answers, people. I need to know this. This is this is for my personal database. Lucky Apex just keeps posting noob. If I was 10, I would be insulted, but luckily I've I've grown up a little bit. I'm not playing Call of Duty anymore. <laughs> Alright, Beige is gonna be shooting into broadside. Again, we could see broadside go down, but. Not when you're only rolling one hit. Just bends it, spends the force. Right side spends the focus, no damage. Office space, definitely. Okay. What about Lucky Apex? Or is there a movie? Is there the movie called Noob? Is there a movie called Noob that you would rewatch ten times? seeing yellow going to broadside now. This is range two, just out of range one. The so plated hole makes that a regular hit and yellow does not have a four, so that's just gonna be one hit. Broadside rolls a blank. That's another damage. So three hole remaining, including hole upgrade on there. Three hole left. Looks like the winner. I don't know if I so I recently watched Shutter Island and I was like blown away by that movie. I I, I know it's so dumb that it took me that long to watch this that movie of, of all the movies like I haven't watched. There was no reason why I didn't watch Shutter Island. Oh, we had a die disappear. Few hits, got an evade there. Another damage into broadside. Jeff is picking away at broadside. But he's not leaving the table. He's still around. Let's see, all right. Um, I think we are going back to dials now. Broadside didn't leave the board, and I think Isaiah might have won that round because of it. Let's take a look at the state of everything on the overlay here. So we have three halved Inquisitors. We have two fully healthy Inquisitors. And then we have one, two, two Jedi Knights that are one damage away from half. So we could see Jeff pull ahead or at least get even here and score this next engagement, depending on where he's able to line everything up. But these are the most difficult turns because of uh, just how close everything is. Um, how do you line up a good shot without bumping, without facing the wrong direction, without hitting an obstacle? All these things, these are all things to consider. These are actually like some of the most exciting turns, like when I watch a Lex Wing stream to see how players respond when they're put in kind of a weird situation with their a weird spot with their ships. Because it's clear that both of these ships like to uh, be blockers and, and line up bullseye and they both are kind of working against each other a little bit. But Isaiah's come out a little bit on top so far. At about 23 minutes left. Will we see a final salvo again? I don't know, maybe. Last game was insane. I can't wait to put that up. That would be great. I think 
we are about ready to move here. About ready to activate our ships. Yeah, just trying to, we've got to remember to recover that force at the end of the turn. So that is a must. That must happen. Even if you forget, it has to come back. to activate red. Uh, changing his mind. Suspense. It is killing me. <laughs> what is the worst coach child gonna do? Is he gonna, is he gonna pull a rabbit out of the hat? Play some styles. Okay. Jeff is keeping his dials by his ships. He doesn't want to bother. <laughs> the pile of tokens. Not the cleanest game state, but I've seen like way worse, so it doesn't really, it's not really bothering me too much. Not a big deal. I've played with and seen way worse. Here, yeah, here's, here's a good moment, guys. Um, these, these two are doing a pretty good job of, of cleaning up and everything, and the last two guys were, were doing just fine with it. Um, but it's just thinking out loud. It is really, really good for your games and for the well-being of your opponent and the experience of, of just, just smooth sailing to clean up the game state. When you spend something, take it off the board. Put your maneuver templates back when you're not using them. Like these are all things that just make it less stressful for both you and your opponent, if, especially your opponent. So if you're just making a mess and let's say you're beating them or you're beating like the crap out of them, it's that's stressful. At least beat them cleanly, <laughs> literally. Being a clean opponent is important. I mean, sure. Sometimes you you forget to take something off. Like it's not a, you forget to take a dial back. It's it's I do that all the time. I just mean overall. Try to if you aren't good at that, try to improve at that. It just makes everyone's lives easier. There's my PSA for the night. No more PSAs. But that's just me. If you wanted to know what my opinion on a game state clean friendliness is, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. All right. Like another leapfrog, so Age just hops over. Still has wounded pilot. Could repair it. Yeah. Opting to barrel roll and then has to roll for wounded pilot, which is doing. No stress, so he could do an action now too. Fine-tuned controls, pretty good. What's your opinion on lens flare? Like, you mean like J.J. Abrams style lens flare? So there's lens flare, which is like a nice aesthetic, and then there's J.J. Abrams lens flares. Um, I feel like most movies, like a movie that doesn't abuse it has like one or two lens flares in the entire film. Maybe three. J.J. Abrams has like 100 or 200 lens flares, and like, well, if you look at the Star Trek films in particular. I think lens flares like CGI are really good complementary pieces, but should not be taking up too much attention on screen. That's my opinion. What, do you, what about you, Luke? What do you, how do you feel about the lens flare epidemic plaguing the country right now? I'm sure many would argue that it plagues Hollywood. <laughs> All right, yellow moves in, takes a focus. They're, they're using the bigger tokens I set aside for him. And <laughs> it's nice they're remembering, like, oh, yeah, that's right. He had these set aside for us. We should use the right ones. Thanks, guys. Broadside turns away. So remember, red isn't going to be there in a moment. So I don't know if Broadside is going to have a shot. Broadside might die this turn. I think that's what's going to happen. I wish there were more lens flares in movies. Ah, I like this stance. I like this stance. 
I'm not smart enough to critique film. <laughs> Why not? Anybody, dude, anybody can critique film. Think about your normal day-to-day -day activities. The sun is everywhere. Yeah, but Dutch, you forget, I'm from Chicago. I don't know what the sun looks like, sir. I've only heard, it sounds like a myth to me. Does it really exist? How can I have a lens flare if I've never even seen the sun? <laughs> Dutch Cuthbert, ladies and gentlemen. How do you think everyone wears sunglasses? To be cool, I don't know. They're called cool glasses for a reason. I think I think a lot of movies don't even put a single one in because of how conscious they are. I think J. Let me say this: hot take. I think J.J. Abrams has ruined lens flares for a lot of like for Hollywood for filmmakers. Maybe not all filmmakers, because like you, like I am like conscious enough to be like I'll do whatever I want. But like at least in the industry, like Hollywood industry, I think he's kind of ruined it for people. That's my hot take. I'll take JJ is my favorite. I'm okay, and I'm not even saying that JJ is like a bad person or a bad director or a bad filmmaker. I'm just saying that he had his okay. You know, you have a problem with lens flares when your wife tells you you need to stop using them. Like, that's that happened. <laughs> like, it, he's done a lot better with it. Also, it's Star Wars, he just wouldn't let him put that many in, but. It was fun. It's funny, like going back and watching like Star Trek, and like, wow, there are a lot of lens flares. That is an interesting opinion. I like that. That that's a conspiracy I could get behind. To stop with the lens flares. That's right. The, all those movies you've made, Dutch. All the all the premieres, the lens flare premieres. Maybe we could start a company called Lens Flares, and we just make lens flares. I see in the chat, in the game chat. No, what what happened? What just happened? Oh, he. Uh, I think what happened was that he wanted red to bump so he could shoot broadside, but now he's behind broadside. You still have blue, and I think it looks like green. Both have shots going into broadside, so it's not the end of the world. Player skill. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did I miss? They did something that was really close. Oh, is there a game going on? I know, I have to remind myself, like, oh yeah, these guys are playing because I asked them to. Have you seen my YouTube channels? Lens flares everywhere. <laughs> They're only lens flares. You can't even like see on anything else. I'll I'll have to take a look at type exclamation point lens flare for a free lens flare from the chat. It's real, trust me. It's totally legit. All right, this is a CLT shot, range one. Jeff rolls, uh, rolls an eyeball blank focus. I think this was from. Who was this from? It had to have been. It had to have been beige? No, that's not beige. That's green. Green, I think, took that shot. Or it was. Okay. Some, some, some confusion going on here. Put a lens flare on screen. Do you guys actually want me to do that? That would actually be way too easy to do. Put a lens flare. Oh god. That would be way too easy. I oh god. Okay. Whatever happened, no damage was dealt, it looks like. So just make sure green is at half, yellow is at half, that's all correct. Blue is at half. <laughs> My eyes. Yeah, man, you wanted them. 
you you're gonna get them. You won't even be able to see my streams. It'll just be like, and I'll make it like five points, something ridiculously cheap, so that like, I'll only people only sub to me so they can see lens flares. Change my channel to Lens Flare Squadron. I have these ideas in my head. Thanks, JJ. Hashtag thanks, JJ. Okay. All right, guys. Ready for me to be really a, a total devil's advocate? Who here? There's nothing wrong with it. Who here liked? Was a fan, like a big fan of the of um, the Rise of Skywalker. I'm not saying why. I'm not asking for why. I just say you could just say I liked it, or I didn't like it as much. Make it so if you sub, you get sunglasses, dude. That would I would be so broke. Ray Bans? Would they be Ray Bans? Ray Ban sunglasses. I like pie. Valid. I think I think Apex liked uh, Rise of Skywalker. Dutch liked Rise of Skywalker. Four out of ten. Okay. Four out of ten. That's like if you double it, that's like a B. It's not bad. <laughs> okay. Jeff spinning the target lock. This, that range one shot into green, it looks like. Spends the force, makes it hit crit. Whoa, the dice are flying. <laughs> I wish that was what he rolled. That's not what he rolled. Not real sunglasses. Oh, like an emote. You can modify, you can spend channel points to modify one of the emotes. Like you can unlock it with channel points and you can modify it, put sunglasses on it. Uh, it was a console fire on green. He's <laughs> enlarging the damage deck now. Okay. The so green, that's half points on green. That's gonna get Jeff even closer. I think we might be tied up now. 62 points for Jeff. To 60 for Isaiah. This is Geoff. G J J off Joff Joff Joffrey, maybe it's Joffrey. Blue is going into broadside. It looks like my my commentary game is just so on point. I know. Uh, not great, Bob. Just one hit. That was range two. Broadside gets what he needs. Gets the evade. Easy. Again. I imagine it's going, he's going into broadside. Green activates. Child abuse. <laughs> oh, these guys, if you guys can see, they're putting text on the mat. Player skill of child abuse. <laughs> Isaiah needs to pull it through, so we could say that Jeff didn't play just because it was a 13 year old. Two hits, oh no. That could be it for broadside, it looks like it is. Unless that's going into, no, that's going into green. Makes sense, because either one was two away. No, it is broadside. I'm confusing myself and they're confusing me. That is a dead broadside, folks. F's in the chat for broadside, he's gone. He's gone. I haven't been paying attention to the stream. That's what I want to hear. The content you deserve. <laughs> that is a good question. I want to say I can pull up. The, I can pull up the in-game chat. Um, let me kind of. Oh, nope. I accidentally moved his damage cards. Uh, let's see. Ooh. Three-ish, like four. I want to say we're on like our, our fifth turn right now. I That's what I want to say. We might be on our sixth. That's between five or six turns. I'm glad that Jedi killing clone is dead. Talk about something I think we all like, the Clone Wars. Like, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but wow, that last season was quite good. 
Not bad. Space Jam LA. I better see your faces in Space Jam LA. I'm probably gonna help out with it again. Most likely. When is Space Jam LA, guys? Is that next weekend? a spot losing my six games the following weekend so what is that that's the first weekend of june correct correct me if i'm wrong or you do you mean oh you said yes so it, it is the end of the end of the month okay Interesting. Okay. Got it. Players are setting dials right now. We'll be back into the action in a second. It was a pretty good turn for Jeff. He was able to take broadside down. So now Jeff is up 84 to 60. Roll for wounded again. We have, we have another damage card on this one. A console fire on green and yeah, wounded on, on beige. Okay. You don't want to waste twenty dollars. No, you wouldn't. Is that what it costs us? I don't. I have no idea what you're talking about. What you talking about, Willis? I'm watching the game. I don't know what you guys are doing, but I'm here to watch the game. So, and I'm not even the view. I'm the streamer. I'm not even the viewer. Can you believe it? The tides are turning. Yellow is going to barrel roll. It looks like a fine tuned barrel roll here. Spends his force. Barrel rolls to the right and back. Folding laundry. Well, you should try folding laundry sometimes because folding laundry is more entertaining than folding laundry. promote people's stuff. Dutch is a good dude. He's a promoter. He's an influencer. Lens flares, sunglasses, influencing people's minds. The recipe for awesomeness. Holding, holding Londi, thinking about those dinosaurs. <laughs> I need to put a Daiwanawanga in the chat for that one. A Daiwanawanga. There it is, Daiwanawanga. <laughs> Look at, oh my god, Luke, you're giving subs to everybody. You're crazy. Dutch has joined the squadron. Look at Dutch. Dutch is riding high. He can now Daiwanawanga himself if you really wanted to. Shout out to Luke. Luke's the man. He's way too kind. The kindness of Luke Carrington. Check out the Gold Squadron paint cast. You can see some of the coolest miniature painting ever. And you could even win it. Tune into the Gold Squadron podcast and you could even win some of his ships. There it is. There's the Wanga. Shut your mouth. Shut my mouth. I will not shut my mouth. You don't come over here and tell me to shut my mouth. That's not, that's not fair. All right, spent the force. Oh yeah, there's a game going on. Green. 
I'm just kidding. I'm watching. I'm grumpy and mean. <laughs> Isaiah needs to find a way to kill one of these Inquisitors he's whittled down. We do have Red. Red has lost a shield, so we'll, we'll update that accordingly. My expert commentary and paying attention skills. That could be a song. I'm grumpy and I'm mean. And I'm watching your stream. Cause I'm grumpy and mean. God, that was terrible. I'm not quitting my day job. Yeah, and it is. A, we are playing at a little bit slower of a pace. I think these guys are are they're spending a lot of time on their dial choices. Um, I've seen slower. I mean, I've seen definitely slower games, but there's ten ships on the board. They're all touching each other, or you know, too close to really make the right maneuver choices. A lot of second guessing. Um, yeah, Isaiah needs to kill a couple. He needs to kill a couple ships like right now. Yesterday, he needs to do it yesterday. All right, Jeff bumps again. There's a lot of bumping going on. Players of stress. So Isaiah's gonna have, he has, uh, he looks like he has three range one shots onto, yeah, definitely take the evade, right? Onto green, that's a possibility. Unfortunately, we might have to prepare for, to lose beige. So I think yellow is touching, yellow isn't touching. Um, Isaiah's ship there. So we get a blue and yellow takedown beige. So here we go. Rolling for console fire now. This is green. Green takes the damage. One hole away. We could also see a dead green. This is this is also very possible. You mean you don't get paid? Dude, I get paid. Every time somebody talks in the chat, I get a hundred dollars. So you've made me so rich. I, I want to say it's been more than six. I, I like I'd like to say that. Oops, sorry. Ignore that. Ignore that. Oh my god, it's not. Oh no, the game. What is happening to the game? And that's time. Looks like. Sorry guys, I like tabletop simulators like being weird. I lost my cursor. My cursor disappeared. Oh, oh. There we go. Game froze. All right. Yeah, we're we're actually gonna we're actually gonna talk to the players about what's going on, um, or just about the game in general. Back. Here we go. A hundred space bucks. A hundred credits. A hundred three one two squadron credits. finish their shots. See you later, Dutch. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good weekend. See you later. See ya. Wouldn't want to be a Mr. Lens Flare. <laughs> All right, green. This is might be range one. It looks like it is. Range one and bullseye. So add the focus results. Whole bunch of focuses. Okay, but you spend your focus, and you're gonna get three hits there. change it to four hits. Use. I'm 
I think he did that by accident. Like Jeff didn't take any damage there, he rolled out of it. So we move on, we continue on. Onwards. All right, eyeball, eyeball, crit, blank. Quick this evasion to red. Blank out. It takes a shield. That's half points, but won't be enough. Yellow and evade. Here we go. Here's Jeff's returning shots, and that's going to be three hits right there. Or yellow and into green. I apologize. Plenty enough. So takes the one. That's all Jeff needed to take out green. So the green Jedi Knight is kaputs. <laughs> Explosion sound effect. Explosions special effect. V effect. So that's going to... That's now... 80 to 103. So I th see the Inquisitors are worth how much here? The Inquisitors with Foresight just under just about 40 points. So not enough if you killed one. But Isaiah is no longer shooting. This is the last turn. So it's just a matter of how many points can Jeff get here. I'm gonna jump into their their voice chat real quick. I'm gonna finish the shot here uh, with foresight, okay. so you don't get the range bonus. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Hi guys. Hello. Hello. Do you want us to play out this? I, I, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Well, we just got two more attacks. Uh, so it's three dice. Yes. I just jumped in. Now that's why I'm here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. You're good. Uh, and then the range one from four. Oh, I just went on red. Doesn't matter. You're range one. Yeah. Uh, ooh. <laughs> Hit crit crit. On. Okay. Uh, on to Jedi Knight. So it's into here. Uh oh. Player oh. skill. Oh yeah, player skill. Uh, all right, Daddies, so baby. Shot from here into here. Uh, and this is on Blue, who has spent his force. So it's just Wait, you're talking red again? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It's not gonna give me half. So <laughs> again, oh, <laughs> back, back, back to back. <laughs> uh, that's that's no. the game. Um, so. It was 80 to 103. Yeah. To 103? Oh, yeah. I just killed the last guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I killed him, it was 80 to 84, and I was like, whoo, tight win. <laughs> yeah, it was, oh, it was still pretty tight. Mean. It was like yeah, it was almost a, ship, a ship's worth, yeah. yeah. Or a ha yeah. half points of a ship's worth, yeah. 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 So how many turns did you, did you guys have? I'm, I couldn't tell um, to try to go through the chat log. I want to say it was like six or seven, maybe. Does that sound right? No, or... I think it's more than that. I think it was like eight-ish. Eight-ish. We had Close. one. We had one pre-combat, and then I think, yeah, I would say, yeah, I guess maybe there were six or seven combat turns. Yeah. Okay. A good amount. Yeah. No, I was just wondering. And uh, is because I know you guys started bumping into everyone. Uh, yeah. It can be tough. It's it makes it harder for dial choices when everything's so close. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jeff. Apparently, to Jeff, my board state is terrible. No, I, I meant that you're just like we're leaving tokens and dice and dials, and it was just like I was like Isaiah, this is just a disaster. We. That's the way to go, man. You gotta you gotta frazzle your opponent with the game state. They yeah, forget well, what's happening because there's so much stuff covering their ships. That's that's fair. <laughs> uh, he fortunately was not able to do me in with that. Yeah. So this is uh these are two lists that probably never want to play each other because oh man. No. 
it's, it's, it's partly just comes down to the bid. I think what this is is just the best expression that the Inquisitor is a dramatically underpriced ship. Oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I can't. Then, like, I can't imagine the Jendon like Inquisitor like cluster missile or or whatever yeah. concussion missile one. That that list type two is. It's so spooky. Oh it's, man. It's, it's so scary and. Uh, and then this, like, he had, I mean, it was really close, but the thing is, is, like, they can just take so much damage. Yeah, and, I mean, you can and, evade every time and still have a mod for your attack, like. I know, and the white evade, it's, and, like, the CLT that you get, the peak out of being able to Fordite, which he Fordite pretty consistently in the game. Yeah. But it just yeah. rarely delivers. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the real problem with it. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh. How many times did he use Foresight during the engagement phase? Did he use it at all? I actually, yeah. I feel like you used it a lot less than you normally would against this list. I was specifically trying to avoid it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I Foresight shot, ooh, I want to say four or five times. Uh, but I don't think I did a single point of damage with it. Right. There was there was a time up here, I'll ping the table, up here where you're, you Foresighted, I think it was blue, like Isaiah's blue, yeah. and you... You did like hit. It was in a broadside, I think. Actually, it wasn't blue. It was in yeah. a broadside, yes. and yeah, yeah, it was yeah that was nasty. Hits. Yeah, it was oh, nasty. Yeah. And I'm supposed to say I'm sorry for putting child abuse on your board. <laughs> oh, is that is that because the Twitch algorithm? I don't think is gonna be able to pick that up. But uh, I guess no, if I really need to no. blur it out, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no. It's, uh, <laughs> it, it, but then you rolled. He rolled. No, you took one damage out of that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, I mean, I think the Jedi Knight broadside list is one that, like, I really like. I've played it a few times. It's definitely, I would say, like, a B-tier list right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's really fun. I, and I, so I played it, and yeah, yeah, I, I agree with Jeff, actually. I don't think it's... I actually played that list a week ago. I, like, Will sent, sent it to me. It had brought, I, it didn't have hull upgrade, though. I think it was... Uh, no, it was it was a little different. It was um it was named Jedi, so it was Ahsoka, Plo, Obi, and they all had uh, CLT and broadside. Yeah. I lo I think I might like that a bit better. Yeah, I, I, I think there's. I agree. I think that one might be superior. Yeah, it's tough too because even if Isaiah, even if you like kill one of his Inquisitors, he's like I'll shoot you back. I like that 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 initiative overlap is a little rough too. Because yeah. yeah, yeah. But the benefit and, here is is that his is a real hyperspace list. And I think you can really feel how the Inquisitors are an extended ship right now, because oh yeah, for in, sure. In hyperspace, I think that Jedi list does a little bit better, but in in this, it just doesn't hold up. I mean, yeah. yeah, I I also think that there is a big there's a big part of the X Wing community that doesn't fly certain lists because it's not as quote unquote fun to play rep yeah. repetitively in a, in a day, you know, five or six rounds. Yeah. Um, and, and I think like I think quad U wings is an example is one example of a list like that where it's just like oh, I've uh, played, meh. I've played three, I played three U wings and a wedge. Well, at least you have a different ship in there, right? Like yeah, yeah. something that functions but, a little bit differently, you know. But yeah. I say you also have a much higher tolerance for like uh, mm -hmm. different, yeah, for like different play styles. I, I, but because I think Nick's right, like there's a lot of players that don't want to experience to yeah like there's just a lot of swarms yeah well no no but it's not swarms it's just it's non-engagement lists like yeah. like um uh like four viewings the other one i'll always remember is is the the guy from radio tcx who flew the five tie reapers at lvo oh, oh yeah how he, how he did the interview that at the end of game one he was like oh this was a terrible mistake like i yeah. won but my god i don't want to do this again yeah yeah i i can i can't i can only imagine um flying like a a, a a eight ship like separatist swarm list like all the way to the finals too yeah um well you had like, mitch in your last round and mitch has done that a number of times and it's just you can just tell by the end of the day his just, brain starts it's exhausting i mean seriously like, all no more power to them like i am envious that they can handle that and it's not i'm not bringing down the list or anything it's it's the opposite of like i could never do that oh yeah it's it's so tough yeah this was yeah this was definitely a while you guys pointed each other towards a i mean you, you flew the way i guess you would have to right you have to be facing your opponent you have to be heading towards them trying to line up bullseye you both tried to do that and you both ended up just mashing into each other because that's just what these lists are kind of doing they're low initiative you know mm -hmm. 
pawn slash blocker pieces that can also hit hard when they need to and you were just working against each other so one of you guys just had to have a little bit more luck or better shots lined up than the other and that's basically yeah. what happened so. well the yeah. escape is also critical like what you do after the engage how you turn out and come back to fight is what's really right. important right and you being able to use you could do a 4k in foresight if you had it lined up if you really wanted to yeah exactly you know? Yeah. yeah, but actually, ju jumping back to the previous point on the on the the focho list, and in general, people who are able to fly these like ultra complex lists, I will always remember in first edition, the weekend I met Dallas Parker in San Diego, we were driving back from the tournament, and he had played his tie swarm, and I'd watched him at the final table, and he'd lost in final table, and I'm in the car listening to him explain like the decisions he made that he lost. And I remember in that moment just being like, oh, you're not a swarm player, Jeff. Like, you can't, you can't think the way he just No. And yeah. Ever since then, I've been like, yeah, swarms are cool, but like, I'm good. Yeah, right. I, it's, yeah. it always feels good when you're able to, to beat one, get around it, like do all the right things. But, um, watching them set up, like that's the scariest part is being so perfect with your setup that you yeah. line up the avenues yeah. and the space between your ships for when you keep moving like turn after turn because if you start bumping I mean, each other oh man so bad <laughs> you're screwed I, I played i played uh dylan fernandez's droid swarm for a while that was that was really fun and then i made a really bad decision to not fly it and fly a really weird variation on it with 066 for lvo that i regret like a lot yeah Dylan Fernandez is actually like a real uh, under the radar won. swarm player yeah. right now that I think like he does he's done a lot of really amazing stuff with uh, DBS 32C See? and oh no that was Winan was it Winan who made that list yeah and, that, oh. and I blew that one for a while that was really fun yeah this is the one where you take the two the one that can take an advanced proton torpedo and then the one that can oh, coordinate yeah. ps1 so you barrel roll into range one with that ship at basically mm -hmm. ps7 it is that thing is Super spooky good. and hits like a truck i i flew that for a while as well so yeah. i'm i'm debating on either that or uh kova 3x yeah that's also pretty good yeah i mean uh, i'm a Three T70s and ZZ is also really good. Uh, shout out to Ted, who plays it here with our guys here in Chicago. What T70s is he running that? Uh, he's running, oh, it's uh, the ones that can equip. Um, he puts like, he puts, uh, what does he put on there? He puts R2 and like heroic. Okay. Yes, I think, I think they're, they have to have a talent slot. Yeah, the lowest that has a talent slot. It's yeah, so good, right. dude. So good. They can, yeah. they can, they can regen. Like, oh, so good. Yeah, oh. no, that is really spooky. Yeah. I, 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 I did, I did, I won a store champ, second the store champ, and uh, oh, second yeah, the store champ, champ on, that. yeah, on the three X and Kova list, and it, it just, it just eats a lot, man. Like, yeah. it's so beefy, it can throw out so many dice. I want to get time on ZZ because I just, I haven't flown enough RZ2s yet, and I love. Chess. Yeah, and I think ZZ is actually pretty friendly for players that haven't flown a lot of RZ2s because yeah. there's just options. Just take your evade, yep. then get your focus. Focus, then take your yep. evade. Like almost every totally. turn. Yeah. yeah. All right, you guys. Well, that All was right, that was a good time. I hopefully we can maybe do this yeah. again at some point. Um, that, yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. No, th thank you. I really appreciate it. You guys, you guys are the best. You have. I'm super jealous of your store. Um, shout out to Next Gen again. Yeah. Yeah, We're, it's a great uh, great it, spot. It, it appears to unfortunately it appears to be surviving. Good. Uh, all of this chaos, which we're very thankful for. Yeah. Jeff, the owner, has done a lot to uh, basically create an entire online store with curbside delivery and everything, and or curbside pickup and delivery. And so we're very fortunate that the store is going to keep going. And, I'm just uh, waiting for Jeff to realize what I've been doing. I, 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 I hear what you're doing. I'm trying not to distract it. For the <laughs> oh my god, guys, look at what he did. Oh no. I'm so glad there isn't a game after this. Yeah. Look at look at that! Yeah. Look at that! All right, wow, I that is right. Fed route range one. Is that Fed route range yeah. one? That's exactly. <laughs> that, that, that's, feel, that's what Fed route range one feels like right there. Oh All man! Right. All right, you guys, take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, guys.
I don't know how dark it's gonna be. It's pretty dark now. Um, let me turn up my game a little bit more. There we go. Woo! <laughs> uh, that was, it was, today was a really good day for a couple of, um, of X-Wing games. We, we got to see a really, really entertaining end to the first game. And we got to see two people that are really good at flying different kinds of lists, fly two lists that are really, really deadly and really hard to pick apart and, and kill. And um, we have Mish who went one in final salvo dramatically after three rerolls in the first game. And then we had Jeff pull it out over Isaiah here in the second one. Um, also, you know, Mitch over Bryant first game to not mention Bryant. Um, wanted to thank all you guys uh, who watched and thank you to the players for, for playing. Um, I just had the idea of uh, calling out to the guys I met down in LA at Next Gen and about maybe streaming some of their games, and just get and just kind of get everyone together and, and have a good time. And it's exactly what we did. And I feel great about it. I hopefully you had a good time. Um, thank you to all the people that followed us. We're getting closer to our follower goal at 175. We're like 12 away now, I think, or at 163. So we're 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 getting up there.